everybody, this is Sarah Scopic, and you are watching another episode of Traffic Musings. I almost said another episode of Let's Play Something because that's what I've been having to hear myself when I edit this last week or so. But no, this is not Let's Play, this is Traffic Musings, yay! As you guys know, I've been playing a lot of uh, Undertale, and so it's making me think about dogs. And dogs remind me that I have a little puppy at home. Okay, actually, I don't have a little puppy. I actually have a pretty large dog at home, but that's beside the point. He will be forever a puppy in my heart. For those of you who don't know, I have, well, my family has, I should say, a black and tan coon hound. He is about five years old. That sounds about right. Yeah, he's about five years old. And he is the biggest derp who ever derped, but I mean that affectionately, of course. We got him as a puppy from Tennessee, and the story of that is actually kind of funny and simultaneously sad. But before I go there, I just want to say that for the longest time, uh, our family didn't really have any kind of dog or furry creature in our house. A lot of scaly creatures. It's funny because my last name is Scales. <laughs> but not a lot of like furry kinds of creatures. I grew up with having a lot of fish. We used to have a fish tank in my room. My parents and I were pretty darn good taking care of those fish. I had a fish, I had a couple of fish actually that would last for like five years or four or three years, which for our fish is a very long time. I always remember the names of the, the kinds of fish. My favorite were always neon tetras, which if you don't know what those are, they're these super tiny little fishies that are blue and red and they're very glowy and I always thought they were cool mostly because they were so tiny and also actually my last fish um, basically I was gonna we, my family said I was allowed to have a bookshelf uh, as soon as I got rid of the fish tank in my room so I was kind of waiting for this last fish to die and it was a tiny little neon tetra and it lasted for probably like three years that thing took forever to die anyway meanwhile my brother got uh, got had a gecko uh, named Spotty. Poor, poor Spotty and his calcium deficiency and died by having his skull cave in from lack of calcium. I don't know how that was traumatizing to my brother. Jesus. Uh, my brother also had other, like, scaly kinds of pets. I don't know them all. I know he had a, uh, uh, what are those things called? A skink? No, a, um, I don't remember what they're called. Point is, is he had lots of scaly creatures. That was kind of our thing for a while. The reason we just, we never really had dogs or cats, not, I don't even really know why. My father, uh, when, he, when, my, when my parents got married, my father still had a dog from when he was like, I don't know how old he must have been. He had been like in his 20s when they got this dog. Um, but, you know, he kind of had it when he was younger and he took it with him when I guess we got married. And he was a, I believe it was a golden lab, golden retriever, one of those dogs. <laughs> I'm really bad at dogs. But he had, his name was Man. Mango, a very adorable older dog. He died before I was born, but my brother got to see him for a little bit. He apparently, he was described to me as a very old dog with a young dog heart. He would kind of keep insisting that he was a little dog that could jump everywhere, but he had horrible arthritis, was partially deaf and partially blind, and I think they'd end up putting him down just because of how, just how many issues he had. But he, that, that dog was a survivor. He was for a while, I think, uh, had, was the oldest dog from the city I grew up in. So, I mean, that's something. But after that, we just never got any of the furry animals. My, both my parents love dogs. Uh, I grew up with them. But my mother and my brother are very, very allergic to cats. So we were never going to get a cat. Which, I mean, whatever. I, I didn't really have a preference either way growing up because I didn't really grow up with either animal. But then one day, my brother had this huge announcement when I was, gosh, I must have been a junior in high school at that point. Yeah, I was like a junior in high school. And he said, everyone, I have a, I have a family, I need to call a family meeting, which is weird because we never have family meetings. <laughs> and he had this PowerPoint presentation about why our family should get a dog and specifically a coon hound and a black and tan coonhound at that. So we talked it over. I didn't think my parents were going to agree to it, but they totally were fine with it because we just, we never grew up with, I never grew up with a dog, so I just always thought it was never going to ever happen. But then I was like, yeah, let's get a puppy. What? Okay, a puppy. Sure. Holy crap. My brother originally had found a, uh, a breeder in Ohio that did black and tan coonhounds. Now, for those who don't know, coonhounds are hunting dogs. They're hounds. Uh, they're named coon hounds because they were known for hunting raccoons. The other thing you need to know about coon hounds is... Thank you. You are... 
Yep, that happened. The thing about coon hounds is that you're, they are usually bred for hunters. They're not typically bred to just be a, a dog, you know, just to be a, a dog in a family. <laughs> a family dog is not really what they're made for. But my brother loves hounds, and my parents were, didn't really care either way, so we decided to go with coon hound. Anyway, I was saying about how there was a, a breeder in Ohio. And this was a kind of a smaller time breeder. And basically, this breeder had a, a pregnant coon hound mom. And she, uh, they, they had counted, I think that she had like five babies uh, growing. And basically, the first one was going to be kept for the breeder's purposes. The second one was going to be for a hunter. And the third was going to be for us. And the other two, I think, were going to be for some other people that wanted, wanted this coon hound. The, this puppy, I think, was going to be born around uh, in, in the summer. But, of course, we were going to have to wait to be able to pick up the puppy. Because you're not really supposed to take the puppies until, like, between six and eight weeks or something like that. Uh, so that they can, you know, be weaned with their mom and all that kind of stuff. You know, ethical things. I knew we were going to get this puppy from this breeder in Ohio. Well, uh, a really terrible thing happened. Uh, just an accident that no one could have predicted. Uh, basically what happened was, of the five puppies, uh, one of the puppies was too big. Usually, at least coon hound puppies are generally about a pound when they're born, I believe. And one of the puppies, I guess, was like between three and five pounds, which with other puppies in there was substantial. And unfortunately, as a result, I think the mom may have gone to early labor, I'm not really sure, but basically all of the puppies died except for the huge one and like one of the other ones. So the first, you know, they stayed with the breeder, the one went to the hunter, and we didn't have, we didn't get to have any other puppies because they, they, they passed away. That was a really, it was a pretty, it was pretty tragic when it happened. My, my brother was pretty, uh, horrified about it. We all were. It was just, he, he uh, had, I think he got the call while we were at a restaurant and had to relay the information to us and it was just, it was just terrible. So as a result of that, we, we, uh, we, you know, we looked everywhere for any other, you know, puppies, <laughs> any other black and tan coon hounds, and we found a breeder in Tennessee. And so, uh, my family decided, okay, we're taking a family trip down to Tennessee from Michigan. Oh my goodness, that was an awful car ride. So we get in the car and we drive down to Tennessee. We go in this like old motel room, nine hour car drive. Oh, and then we go to the breeder. It turned out this breeder not only did black and tan coon hounds, but also did St. Bernard puppies. If you don't know what St. Bernards are, they're those those shaggy giant dogs that you uh, you, you kind of, you, you might have seen pictures of them, like, holding the barrels of wine in the Swiss Alps. That's where they, they, they're, there is a St. Ber St. Bernard, was originated from Switzerland. <laughs> and, uh, they breathe for those two. My, my brother asked if we could pick one of those up, but my mom was less than thrilled about the idea. So, no St. Bernard for us, just, just a, just a coon hound. So we went to the, we went to the place and they, they showed us the puppies. And, uh, my brother goes through one and he doesn't really care which one to pick. So he just picks the biggest puppy because he's thinking, you know, that's usually the healthier puppy. So he picks up, he picks up the biggest puppy, he looks at it, and then he drops the puppy. Yep, that, yep, my, my brother dropped our dog and that is why he is a derp. No, no, it's okay. We, we love him. Anyway, the lady kind of stared at us after, after he dropped him and, and just kind of look of, you're getting that puppy, aren't you? We went, yeah, we're gonna get this one. And that's how we got Odin, our favorite puppy ever. And he was just quite the character. The funny thing was is that despite him being a pretty uh a pretty big puppy, he actually grew up to be not uh that big of a coon hound. I mean he's still a big dog. He's around 60 pounds, or he looks like 65 pounds. But keep in mind his father was a hundred and his mother was not that far behind. So honestly, I think we really lucked out because I'm not sure if we could handle a hundred pound puppy in our nice suburban house. <laughs> but he is, you know, he is what he is and he's adorable. The hilarious thing 
about Odin is that he is literally allergic to everything. Okay, not literally allergic to everything. He's allergic to a lot of things, however. He's very, very lactose intolerant, which not unusual for dogs, but still the degree of his lactose intolerance is pretty significant. The, uh, the mi biggest issue, though, is that he's allergic to um, buckwheat and basically just allergic to a lot of kinds of wheat and stuff that you see in dog food most dog food so he has to t take hypoallergenic dog food uh as i told you my mom is you terribly ah! as i told you my mom is terribly allergic to cats for example she has a lot of allergies in general so uh odin fits right in because he can take the same medication that we all take for our allergies you which I, because he can take which he could take all the same medications as uh, the rest of my family can, so he fits right in. <laughs> he he's just a character. Coonhounds are just hilarious little creatures. He makes like these so many different funny noises. Every coonhound has actually kind of a, a pretty distinct bark, like an individual one, and so I can pick out Odin's bark in a crowd in a second. I know who's Odin. He's also the most extroverted of our whole family. He is the huge party animal, literally. We used to take him to like a play and stay place, uh, especially when we were all in school and stuff like that. Could really take care of him like daily, daily, you know, when he needed that puppy interaction, which was actually a good thing because he, you, you actually, one of the biggest issues with dogs is that they can, they do well with people, but they don't always get a lot of interaction with other dogs. So they don't, you know, always get that, that good puppy interaction. And Odin did. That was the one good thing we did for him. So he loves other dogs and other humans to, to the point that he will jump on you because he thinks you're just the bee's knees. Well, we would take him to the play and stay, you know, it'd be relatively quiet, and then he would all of a sudden start barking, and then the whole place would just erupt. So I think all the guys just knew Odin as, oh, here comes the party guy, just always wants to talk to everybody. And yeah, this is running way too over long way too long is what I meant to say because of issues. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope something amazing happens.